Welcome to another Alex Hansry podcast for February 6, 2015. To be in the world, but not of the world. To be in the matrix, but not of the matrix. To be in society, but not of society. And most of my life has been marked by this journey. My whole life, I have felt like an outsider. And I have looked at reality and a lot of things in a fairly unique perspective. And even at this age of almost 35 on the 25th of uh, this month, I still have yet to really mature some of my messages and information to a level to where it can really reach a lot of people. So there's definitely a lot of room for growth in my delivery and things of that nature. But I believe that the information, much of it that I've stumbled upon in the last decade, uh, I believe that it's powerful. and There's lots of different things that need to be shared with the world. And so I believe in sharing information that needs to be shared because to me it's part of the spiritual journey to shine light on the issues that need to be discussed or to share the information that needs to be shared or to share the insight or unique opinion that needs to be shared. There's power in that. And human beings, many of them have forgotten about the power of the spoken word. It's not just the pen. And in this digital age that we're in, we can use it for positive transformation instead of just sitting in a lotus position and using positive affirmations. By speaking truth, we affect change. We affect reality in a very unique way by using our voice. And this is something that people forget. There is power in the voice. There's a reason why the First Amendment is important. And there's a reason why, in some cases, it comes under attack. There is power in the spoken word. So, I aim to impact society in a positive way. But I don't. I do not allow society, voluntarily, to impact me in a detrimental way. And in some cases it has, and in some cases it does. And part of our own evolution in the spiritual biological matrix is developing those abilities to change the world in a positive way and to protect ourselves from being led astray. And there's so many different ways that it seems that this world is corrupted by evil, by power, by... uh, this dark spiritual desire to control because not everything from the spiritual realms is of the light, a word I will use for lack of a better description. Not all things of the spiritual plane or spirits are beneficial to mankind. There's a vast spectrum out there, just like the light spectrum. It's like sound frequency. It's a big universe we're in. So society has been corrupted by some sort of a mind parasite. And I want to help the society. And I, I am sure that I'm here for a reason. At this point in my life, there's no doubt. Looking at the timeline of my own life experience... And seeing where I've come from, what I've survived, and what I'm surviving, what I'm persevering through, in almost my Rocky style running up of the stairs, with this unstoppable desire to make it to the final round, translated into another way to continue to live out the rest of my life with not only peace of mind but with strength to not let this world contaminate me to continue to be in a place of help to others by providing my insight to make it to the final round to make it through the things that we're going through now to not stop in this fight in this journey rather 
where the journey is far more important than the destination, but to be in the moment, embracing the journey. And many of us, we, we are living in the flesh and blood spiritual experience because that's what should be taking place when you realize how wicked the system actually is that we're enslaved in on the planet that we are living on right now for the remainder of our lifetimes because none of us none of us are going to be raptured out of this physical plane of reality we're here for the long haul so coming upon stumbling upon discovering the truth about the new world order or anything else that is a wake-up call that is a individual journey that you may be on where you pinch yourself and realize yes you're here you're here now and you're gonna be here for some time the question is why because there's got to be a reason for it nothing's gonna stand in the way of me expressing this opinion nothing nothing is gonna stop me from publicly raising the questions what are we doing here nothing and no one I am not here to be affected infected by the society I am here to shine light I am here to raise questions that should lead us to the answers because in the act of asking the question is the answer itself as I've said before as I've heard before from others said in a similar way but not exact in the question itself in asking the question in raising the question there's an answer there even if the answer does not make itself known right away give it time and the layers of the onion will peel themselves back and the truth will be revealed just remove the obstacle to the truth and the truth shall become obvious clarity of sight things of this nature these are the virtues that we focus our attention on in a world where so many have been led astray that think that they are the mentally sane when in fact they are part of the collective mentally ill on this prison planet for souls as it seems to be I have seen little evidence that this is a paradise I have seen only confirmation after confirmation after confirmation that this is some sort of a fallen realm uh, anyone that thinks that this is a paradise on earth I assume just incarnated out of a hell realm and they're here on parole spiritually speaking for others this is anything but a paradise especially for those that know that we're capable of so much more than this especially with those that have great levels of empathy for those that are suffering we don't recognize this as a paradise we know what this is this is a spiritual prison planet this is not paradise and there's a reason we're here and it isn't just some accident of biology the extension of the tadpole reality there's a reason we're here throughout mankind seers have asked such questions about their reality and the true nature of God and throughout mankind they've been laughed at and called fools and heretics why would we think that that would have changed by now or that that's going to change in the next few years or even in our lifetime how could we become so foolish only those that are attached to the outcome are stuck in looking at things through the lens of what goes down in our lifetime because this this cycle that we're a part of this phase of decline the decline of Western civilization for that matter you can even say the decline overall of civilization globally it is a part of a larger cycle that encompasses more than just our own lifetimes Throughout history, mankind has been reminded that it has choice. It has free will. Unfortunately, religions have come about through the desire of the few to control the many. 
And so people have led, been led astray from seeking a direct connection with understanding the what is, the mechanics of this universe. And they have been led into a brick wall. They've been led into a psychological imprisonment. They've been led into a box way of looking at God and reality. And others in this lifetime, in this reality, in this current day and age that have never actually asked themselves the true questions that they could be asking themselves about how this universe actually operates. Many of them have seen how many religions have failed humanity. And they have mistaken that as a true representation of of how the universe works or that which some choose to call God. And that is a travesty when that happens, when people are affected by society in that way to where they stop asking questions, to where they begin to lie to themselves and say that there is no God because they don't see how there's any evidence for that in this physical plane of reality as if they themselves as a human being with the limited scope of understanding that we're capable of, trapped into a visible light spectrum, that they themselves are qualified to determine what is real and what is unreal. Look at how difficult it is for some of us to manage our own lives in the society. It is difficult to be a human being and have emotions, especially when you have empathy for those that are suffering. So none of us are supermen or superwomen. We are mere mortal humans that have been given a glimpse. We are being given a glimpse into what is possible and what we are capable of. We are being shown that light of truth while we are living the enslaved reality. How fascinating is that? You are not living in North Korea if you're listening to me right now. You are not in China. You are not in Russia. You are likely in a Western country, although I would love to speak to the whole world. And although we are living in our own police state and we have a criminal government, somehow or another, you're able to listen to this and other pieces of information, controversial pieces of information. Some people call the internet the wild card in the sense that in this age of so much control, so much deceit, with the internet, there's also so much information. And that information is not just black and white information about current events taking place right now, covering certain deceptions and cover-ups and conspiracies. You know, hidden history is also available on the internet. Maybe a history of the world that people never learned themselves in school or through their parents about all these histories of wars. And one could go down the rabbit hole and look deeper into the issue at the funding of both sides of a conflict. Or maybe they can learn about the solar flare influence. If they're able to go down that rabbit hole and see the, this connection with solar maximums and world wars. This is really fascinating stuff. The patterns. The patterns of human society. So I'm mystified I'm fascinated by this social experiment and where we're going from here and, you know, asking the question from a philosophical perspective. If, if we see a solar flare kill shot, is that divine intervention, especially if that happens during a World War III scenario? And I'll, I'll discuss this philosophical concept again at greater length in a future video. But... I don't look at things from simply just a black and white reality. I don't let society tell me you can't speculate or theorize or have a philosophy or spiritual perspective that's outside the box. I will not let society contaminate me because there is a place in our society to ask such questions and there is a demand for it. Now, in order for my sight to be even somewhat clear, for, for my body to even have the prana or chi to project out this voice, I have to curtail how much exposure I have to society, how much I let society affect me. And so as I see society becoming more and more unfriendly, I work to shield myself from it and, and protect myself from it because 
I know what it's like to be so affected by the negativity of the society that there's been times where I haven't spoken for days to weeks to anybody at all while in a city. I live a private world that a lot of you don't know. And it's a world where I stick to myself and I live in a trailer on wheels and I live with very little money. Even though people insult me and attack me and troll my videos from time to time, people that send me negative energy despite that, I feel it's my responsibility as a soul trying to evolve that I, that I keep moving forward with these videos. Regardless of the fact that some things that I say may turn some people off, I feel that it's absolutely necessary for me to keep making videos and sharing my truth despite the negativity that's coming at me for going on this path. And there's a lot of men out there that hate the fact that I'm independent, that I'm not actually a slave like them, either spiritually, physically, psychologically, or emotionally. There's a lot of different reasons why certain men out there resent the path that I'm on. And so I am in the world, but I do not feel that I'm of the world. And I seek to protect my, myself spiritually, emotionally, physically, and other ways from the damaging effects of modern society. Meanwhile, I want to be strong enough to on a regular basis keep injecting aspects of truth and light into society in order to make my contribution to helping the world become a better place. Even if I have to pay the sacrifice while in physical form, it's like paying your dues. It's like paying your way through the gates to break through the gates of this prison planet. There's a pain of the dues that has to take place and I'm paying my dues. You know, a lot of people think that being on Access TV is about making money or, you know, ego. Not when you're saying things that cause people to judge you and glare at you at the supermarket. The reason I do what I do, when people are watching Access TV, which is on cable TV, and they come across my show and some of these ideas, they're finding it accidentally. Accidentally, completely, by accident. So it's only by chance and synchronicity that they may happen to stumble upon my show at a certain part of the show where I may be sharing something with them that they need to hear. Likewise, the universe treats me the same way. You know, I could be walking down the street and I could be thinking about signs. Pay attention to the signs, the signs, the signs in this matrix, the signs in the universe. how information comes to people through synchronicity, how the information that I have shared has come to others, how the information from others has come to me through synchronicity. Truth will find us when we're ready for it and not until. And I look up and I see a sign and the sign says 2001 to 2025. And it was just, wow, two dates. are remembered by many. 2001 already from 9-11, we're familiar with. But 2025 is a year that I strongly suspect we could see World War III. But without going down that rabbit hole, looking at this cycle that we're in as a cycle, and that is, those are two solar cycles, 2001 all the way up to 2025. Solar cycle 23 to solar cycle 25. And there's something about these solar cycles and the change that they bring. Not just the 11-year cycle, but the 22-year cycle or 22 to 24-year cycle. So I feel like there's, there's a reason to, to ground this thought here. For those of you that are going, where's Alex going with this? There's a reason why we're going through what we're going through at this particular point in time in the cycle. And this is a cycle where there are so many things, so many changes taking place within society, so many truths being unraveled, so many un energies being released. Some could even say that there's a lot of negativity that's purging from the planet. So there's a lot of things that are changing. And we're seeing those changes within society as human beings are conduits for these spiritual energies of both the high and the low, of the light and the dark, for lack of a better term. 
But in this world of duality, wow, we're seeing a lot of changes within the human species. And I think that some of the people here are here to, to change the world in a better way. To, to interject something positive as if we're bringing information to the world from the light in a world that seems to be shrouded by darkness. Which is why there is deception in that catchphrase that some people, some counterfeit spiritualists like to say. We're not here to change the world. We're here to be changed by the world. That is, that is so profoundly out of balance with reality. Because if someone comes here to just be affected by society, by the world, they can end up a monster. And what it really does is it strips us as individuals from that state of power where we are capable of creating something positive or making a positive contribution. And I think that that is our purpose in society. And when society is demonizing men, when society is demonizing women, and turning the genders against each other, turning the perception of classes against each other, turning the perception of races against each other, turning these perceptions of different political groups against each other, that is all there for division and cause resentment within society. We need less of that and we need more cooperation. But as long as people are going to be primarily in that mindset of division, of the illusion of separation, it's best that we not be affected by that programming. It's important to realize that it's happening and then protect against it and then counter with our own injection of truth, knowledge, inspiration, wisdom, and so much more to be in the world, but not of the world. Okay, that's all for now. I'm enjoying these podcasts and sharing some of these ideas in this longer format because these words definitely need to be shared. Thank you for listening.